talking to you now. We're totally <laughs> unmuted, and I have sung the song so many times. Yeah! Hey, everybody. Welcome to Between the Rolls here at Murder Hobo Inc., our show on Tuesday, where we talk about what happened last week, what we're going to do this week, and then some random topic in between. Uh, as you know, I am the wonderful, the always handsome, devilishly so, Kyle, uh, the DM of the Cred campaign every other Thursday. With us, we have the usual bevy levy of faces, uh, Eugene. Um, oh, no, he's not here today. Eugene. Okay, uh, well, we have Carol. Uh, we have, mind you, I'm not looking at the screen, so I'm going to point in a direction and hope that's where they are. Carol, can... Frank, and David. Thank you. Oh, a little see. bit more about them as they get around to it, but... I, I don't want to talk about that right now. Instead, I want to talk to you about this feel I have and how I found this old piece of paper here, which I will read said feel off of. Uh, follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archives. You can talk to us on Discord if you want to join one of our games. You can hit us up on Twitter, or you can hit us up at imhoboinc at twitter.com. If you want to buy some really cool stuff, uh, cred stuff is on there. Now, how did I know that cred stuff was going to be on there? Such a I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I would definitely buy it. Uh, and the Calamity, too. I would get two sweatshirts, put them in glass boxes, and while you're working on your very own campaign, put cred on one side, Calamity on the other, and I promise you the monstrositous brainstorming that will happen will... Mwah, brilliant campaigns are written that way. Uh <laughs> <laughs> nice if you uh don't want to take a look at us because my camera tends to go out of focus constantly uh you can also take a listen to our audio podcast uh but i'm having a brain fart where that is right now tinyurl.com m hobo inc audio there you go and you finally go. uh we have pirate dog dice uh, if you want to roll uh, amazingly, order some pirate dog dice. In fact, I say it here, order the dog poop dice. Proof you can oh, polish Jesus a turd. Christ. Yeah, that was on there. <laughs> yeah, that I is definitely that. on there. All right. And then, of course, thanks to our other sponsor, Oddfish Games, also known as Silly Salmon Games, for their wonderful adventure sense. Uh, they have Cooking with Dice, the Acid Test. Uh, the Shine Project, which is a set of writing prompts to help you write a wonderful story. You have to switch it over if you want to do D&D, but they are going to eventually work on another one specifically for writing campaigns. And finally, the Kickstarter, How to RPG with Your Cat. Um, they don't like dogs, I'm sorry. Um, it's this Cthulian thing, and so it's cats. Just cats, yeah. not your dog, Steve. <laughs> but guys that's what's going on now oh my goodness no let me forget two more things because it's not written on the list Gen Con uh, Adventure Sense is going to need some help selling some stuff and manning their booth so if you want to hit up their website you can get money to buy that new RPG book you were looking at or smells may I suggest the putrid sewers your players will remember it forever and smell nothing less i yeah. actually had to go to a doctor uh, not too long ago uh, and as they shoved a q-tip far up my nose they pulled out one of the scent beads of putrid sewers uh it was the only thing i could smell i thought it was covid turns out <laughs> no you just still have those beads up your nose kyle Wow, Kyle. Uh, wow. Disclaimer, do not shove the beads up your nose. Yeah, do, yeah. do not shove the beads up your nose but don't inhale them don't take a good strong whiff if you have a line, don't roll up money and stick it up your nose and just do it like nose candy. It is indeed not nose candy. Although, they do kind of look like boogers. Uh, disclaimer, do not eat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jesus. that's fine, guys. Alright, before we start talking about what's going on ahead of us, let's talk about what happened behind us. Last week was our campaign week where we had on Thursday talking about cred. Uh, of course, who better to talk about cred than one of the players? Definitely not the DM. Have the players talk. Oh, the players no. I think the DM would do a great job. 
Ah, <laughs> uh, the DM yeah, would, but he doesn't actually know what happened last time. So, Carol, why don't you introduce yourself as well as talk about your Twitch stream where you do lots of mini painting. Oh, cool. Well, thank you. My name is Carol. Uh, let's see, I'm a longtime gamer, occasional GM, and commission mini painter. And I do run a mini painting stream where I paint minis uh, and give instructions and chat about whatever people want to talk about. Uh, so come and join me. Uh, it's, um, oh God, gee, you think I remember the name of it? It's at muses underscore touch, or, or yeah, muses underscore touch. I don't know if it's an at for Twitch, but. I'm pretty sure. Just look up Muses Touch and you'll find it. I'm at Muses underscore touch on Twitter too. And my stream is on Saturdays at 12.30 p.m. Mondays at 7 p.m. And tomorrow, uh, yeah, tomorrow night, God, I forget what the hell day it is. Tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. All Eastern time. So, and I'm going to be painting, working on uh, this guy which is my husband's barbarian character for Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Nice. And that's me. Oh, and oh, where can I be found here? I play on Cred, as you mentioned. Uh, occasionally Saturday one shots. Um, and on here. So I think so that's about it. Speaking of Cred, what happened? Cred. Oh, we're going to do that. Not oh, have yeah, everybody yeah. Introduce, introduce and then everybody, have, have everybody do the show. Because not everybody is. Oh, wait. Actually, I think we are all talking. About As the host of the show, I decide how it goes, right? I don't have to follow her lead. Yeah. Carol, what happened on Cred oh, last Thursday? Well, I was stalling for more time, but hey, I guess that failed. Uh, what happened? Uh, well, we had just emerged from the Cavern of Horror where we found... Uh, all of our ship's crew, except for the captain and the first mate, horribly dead by ghouls and fought a couple of gas and I believe a ghoul. I think there's still a ghoul somewhere out there, but not positive in that one. So we basically emerged to find the magistrate, the missing magistrate that wasn't really missing because Cal said it was missing, but it wasn't really missing. He came home and wondered what the hell we all were doing there, you know, who we were, what we were doing. And uh, I believe Riley put, uh, what the hell's his name? The captain. Captain Lo Lothar. Lothar. Captain Lothar put uh, Captain Lothar up to telling what happened. And which promptly the magistrate, the little skinny magistrate took the big captain into his office and basically took him to task because he overstepped his bounds. He's supposed to be, I guess, just some big dumb thug in the eyes of the magistrate. But, and the magistrate obviously cares more about law and order and shit like that, rather than the fact that there are ghouls eating citizens of his city. Uh, so what else happened? I'm trying to remember what else happened. Where the hell did we go from there? I, did we... You met Bran's brother. Oh, that's right. We met Bran's brother, who is the other person that runs the city. A half-brother, I believe. It's not his full brother. And he was, he was pretty cool. Actually, he, you actually knew how to make an NPC that wasn't a total dick. So... <laughs> I Ouch! Miss <laughs> but uh but so we got some dirt on bran mm -hmm. actually i think this session was the, the session where we got dirt on everybody um i'm trying to remember what else. i i have my notes some oh my notes are on the shelf you back there. spoke with commander marcus corwell sir marcus corwell of arul katan who is leading the <laughs> military might as well as most See? of the civilic duties that are happening in uh, Farzeen at the moment. Uh, he tells you that there are indeed is another ghoul around. In fact, there's an entire clan of Yeah, ghouls. no, but I mean, no, yeah. no. I wasn't taught, no. I know there was the entire clan, but I think there's one more starving ghoul around. Oh. There's a treaty, there was a war, and there's a treaty between the ghouls and the humans. And the humans are basically feeding all the corpses to the ghouls to keep them happy. Ugh. 
find out that little fact. So now we know what was going on. We're going, what's going on with all the corpses and why they claim them all. And to uh, Anja, this just feels totally wrong. Well, uh, she may eventually do something stupid and way overhead, but not today. <laughs> she not know what to do yet. She, she's like, all right, well, I can't deny though. It's actually, it's actually an efficient way to deal with corpses. They're corpses. So, you know, it's not like they're feeling any pain or anything. <laughs> and it keeps the ghouls happy and prevents people from getting killed in a ghoul attack. So, but why, it, but you know, that begs the question, why are they starving if we are providing them with food? I mean, maybe not enough food. I don't know. So I maybe think it's after rebel ghouls, a different faction among the clans. But other stuff anyway, happened as I mean, well. I remember Bran, I remember Bran actually took off when his brother showed up. Anyways, he took off and went back because he was at one hit point. I wasn't doing much better. I was at eight. So after that fight, that was a rough fight. Uh, so he went back to heal himself and such and take care of Jeremiah and his step brothers, step brother, step brother, not a half brother, actually went and talked to him. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to remember what the rest of us did. Uh, shit, you guys the, headed back to the. Uh... We went to the inn to clean up because we were friggin'. Well, we smelled like shit because we were walking around and shit and blood and guts and just. I think all I really did was went back and took a bath <laughs> for the rest of my day. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I try to remember, did Ernie, is that when Ernie did the research or was that, that was later. Ernie did the research the following day. You guys leveled up to four. Leveled up to level four. Uh, you Sorry. brushed by the fact that Jeremiah was awake from his call. Oh, God damn it. He woke up rabbit. this week. That's right. He woke up this week. Not last week. Yes, he was like starving. I know. And I think uh, I think Bran sort of was in tune to the fact that he was eating rather ravenously. Like maybe he's changing into something, kind of like Bran is clearly changing into something. Although they're not or the same that something. He was so terribly wounded that his body needed the extra energy to. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, Let's go with that. From that. And he's only been eating gruel. Uh, uh, in his sleep yeah. for the past couple of days. Yeah, you sure. guys are so mm -hmm. untrustworthy. What do I look like, Frank? To you, uh, uh, you look that, like somebody running a Cthulhu campaign. So why would we ever trust a GM there? Yeah, that's probably true. Uh, I mean, it's a Cthulhu game. Riley did his research into the Arul Katan letters, uh, where we find out a little bit more backstory about one Anja. Jaeger. <laughs> oh, say it straight out there. Man, don't leave any, mister. Of course, if you've been watching the show, you actually could probably identify everybody that was identified. Yeah. It wasn't just me. I mean, the uh, Bokabite, that would be Cleo. Mm -hmm. and Isabel Walby, uh, someone's mother. Is that Brand's mother? It's Brand's anyway. mother. Anyway. Yeah, uh, that's right. That's when you got up, was. you ended up interacting with first mate Aiden Pasela, uh, where he was talking to you about a few things, and we ended the session. Yeah. That love is in the air. Oh, between or at the least first someone's mate. having some hot sex. Well, that was when I was taking my bath. I mean, you said I was hearing people sporting, mm -hmm. which is a brand new phrase to me. And See, and it's a, yet another one of the five million ways you could call sex. You mean to really I've never heard Jim that Butcher. one. Or Jim Butcher. Never heard of that one. This is, by the or... way, this show is for mature audiences only. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, there's, yeah, there's obviously something going on between the captain and the first mate. And so be it. Yeah. You know, they deserve to find happiness on this That's... horrible island. Absolutely. I'm sure they're not going to be murdered next or anything like that. Anyway, no. from that I kind of hope not. Wonderful I mean, Thursday evening. I, go. You know, I guess that would that would take care of the fact that they they now have no crew for their ship and maybe they're just never supposed to leave the island. 
<laughs> Such a oh, dick. What are we I... as going to say? Hope as long as it's not one of us that's about to get murdered. Although apparently I do have to, even though Anja doesn't know her yet uh, with that research, apparently I do have to watch my back. And that excites me so freaking greatly. Uh, we go from Cthulhu into great and wonderful calamity. David, tell us a little bit about yourself and what happened on Calamity on Saturday. About four minutes. I don't know. Can you? Uh, can you? I can try to get keep under it in time. <laughs> I can get under. Uh, <laughs> yes. Hi, I'm David. Sorry, I wait. play Ingve in the Calamity campaign. I also play Crow in the Calamity B side campaign. You also might know me as Zadar in Cacophony and Dave here in on between the rolls so uh yeah let's get to calamity because i gotta wrap this up all right we uh we pick up where our last episode ended with discovering that this is not a bronze age uh campaign it is a post-apocalyptic campaign of a modern civilization that is yeah suffered like some kind of Armageddon or something. So, yeah. So where we picked up where we left off, we were in the exploring the tunnels that, uh, <laughs> that our intrepid monk uh, claims that the Grubeck escaped through. <laughs> and uh, as it turns out, it turns out to be uh, quite an experience of wandering in the dark, uh, finding, I don't know, panels and the whole what's behind door number one uh, thing when we couldn't get doors open. Uh, suddenly we pull a lever, power comes on in the tunnel, water starts flowing. We discover, we don't know what it is, but everybody else does, it's a hydroelectric plant. And just as soon as that happens, boom, Electric elementals <laughs> come up and yeah, kill members of our of our party. I mean, not the main party, but who were with us, some of the uh, survivors and refugees. And uh, yeah, put a put a beat down on some of us. So Dave found out the hard way that you cannot grapple lightning. So. <laughs> That happened. Ingve found uh -huh. out that there's there's a possibility that his, his spirits will not come into a cave, but thank God I rolled high enough. Anyway, so we continue the track. Uh, we we get through the tunnels. We get to the other uh, other side of the river. We see that there is uh, a road, and it turns out <clears throat> it's a road. So we have two options. So we could cut across land and explore and run into all kinds of hazards, or we can stay, try to stay safe and stay on this paved road, uh, take shelter when we can. But yeah, turns out to be a pretty grueling uh, thing, you know, trekking across, uh, you know, hot asphalt. Anyway, so, so after a few days of doing that, we uh, run into, uh, you know, the dilemma of not having food. So we split the party, uh, you know, Azari and Dave go on a hunting expedition. Uh, yeah, Ingve and Rick here, uh, you know, try to keep watch over the, um, over our, uh, our trail, our, our refugees and survivors. Anyway, sum it up, uh, yeah. Run into an encounter in there. Ingve learns the hard way, so does, <laughs> so does Azari. Yeah, that when icicles explode, uh, you know, there's residual damage. Uh, let's see, Rakir ends up standing on top of the world because he discovers what a power tension line is, <laughs> which I was hoping he'd try to grab a cable, Frank. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah so after trekking after that uh you know also rakir throws a dart hits somebody you'll just have to watch the episode it's pretty freaking funny calamity is a hysterical campaign uh we make it back to ba and yeah so we got to see what the fallout of duff 
getting bit and back <laughs> is going to be like, you never know. So did have a vampire overlord on our hands. <laughs> and that's it. That's the calamity campaign. Hey. Uh, yeah. Frank's shaking his head. <laughs> Frank knows what, what's going Frank? to happen. Yeah, he does. He's got to get a piece of paper in front of his face real quick here. He's going to let something slide. Mm-hmm. I, I still don't understand why you guys think he's going to be a vampire. <laughs> no, well, he got bit by whatever he's that was. Obviously, in, going in to the be a war. werewolf. Yeah, it's obviously a werewolf. <laughs> it's obviously a lich. <laughs> yeah, that's, a that's not how. That's not how you become a lich. It is in calamity. Yeah. Bum, I was bum, meant to say, bum. Carol. Bum, bum, bum. I, by the way, by the way, I was gonna say. Well, yeah, I know it's supposed to kapok, but it is still a Bronze Age. It's still the Bronze Age. It's just the Bronze Age of the next, next for, you know, next time around the. Uh, I, I don't want to say around the sun, but you get the point. Yeah, it all came. It's still, circle. it's still, uh, yeah, it's yeah, the next time around the circle. So it, yeah, you're in the Bronze Age of this whole new era. Yep. So it's Should like be fun. <laughs> we're and the I'm apes, bad. Frank. <laughs> So how did things go Sunday, Frank? (laughs) Uh, Sunday was episode 277, the Margu campaign. Uh, These guys have decided to go into the Chasm Peaks, kind of an inverted mountain range, to locate the elusive and legendary and possibly non-existent dragon horde from the dragon they killed above ground. Uh, They, along with 71 of their closest competitors, have gone into the Chasm Peaks to seek out their fame and fortune. The week before, they had their hands full with cockatrice and first-level half-lane archers. Uh, This week, they did not fare any better. Uh, They had a variety of different problems that they had to deal with, including sloping, breaking shale, flying angry Sioux monsters, hurling feces and shale at them. Uh, And then they had to fight a roper. Uh, The good news is uh, the defeat of the Roper uh, netted them the money they need to go ahead and cover the costs for those government overlord bastards trying to screw them out of their hard-earned slash stolen roadhouse. Uh, The bad (laughs) news is uh, if they thought they were ready to take on the nation and rule it, they learned the hard way that... uh, Besides first level half weight archers, uh, a roper will handle them quite well. Uh, so these guys are on a very specific timetable because they only have 27 days. Uh, I've made it abundantly clear that if you go four days in, it's going to take you to four days to get out. So be wary of the clock tick tock. Uh, they will continue to explore the chasm peaks. Uh, this week on Sunday. Uh, This Saturday, we have a one-shot. It's an open one-shot, so if you're interested, go ahead and hit us up, mhoboinc, Twitter or Gmail. Uh, Always fun. And then Thursday, we've got Cacophony. So, uh, Cacophony... They're uh, the end game! Is there a villain? Uh, It's hard to say. It's hard to say. (laughs) Is it Mortimer J. Sneed? Um, Who knows? Or is it us? (laughs) I was sitting there waiting for a cameo from the C1, not me, because I've never been to the Grand Academy, but to the other C1 cameos. You'll have to stay tuned, Carol. In the Grand Academy. (laughs) Because actually there was. So. Boom, boom. I listened to this with the last... No, from from one of the C campaign one guys. Mm-hmm. Yep, so that was yep. You gotta you gotta figure out how time works first. Uh, oh yeah, well I know it. that's gonna be the interesting part of that. The whole best deal. part is what Frank part? doesn't even know how. It works. Yeah, he doesn't even. You know. have to figure it out. Frank's known for four <gasps> months. <laughs> but wait, didn't it, but but the Grand Academy isn't on Sedalis, right? It's no. on its own island. No, it's on its own island. Yeah. 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 It's Sedalus campaign. Near, but it's so. near it's near Sedalus, I assume. Mm-hmm. But who mm-hmm. knows, folks? There might not even be a villain because there sometimes oh, there's totally the only a villain. villain 
is the, is party, the party themselves. Uh, Honestly, I was about to say, that's us. <laughs> what, no, what it's villain the is the ones we made of ourselves no, along the, the way. Come on, you we know, all what? know the villain is Dewey Darkamil. That's, that's Absolutely. The, that's Duh. the villain. You live yeah. long enough as a hero, you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. And that's, so, <laughs> that's what's happening. <laughs> but sometimes uh, the villain actually turns out to be the good guy. And that's what we're going to go ahead and talk about next. Uh, the friendly villain. Now, there's a, there's a lot of opportunity in this, especially for you young DMs. A lot of times everybody will say, oh, the bad guy he kills children, uh, steals your food, murders your parents, et cetera, et cetera. Sure, that is your typical uh, villain, your BBG, you know, the bad guy, the asshole at the end of the game. Sometimes, though, and I, I to be honest, I don't use it that frequently. No! Uh, because, because you can't. Do not use this frequently because your players will then start to murder everybody who gives them a coin, a hand up, uh, some useful advice because players are douchebags. Uh, just Welcome like the to Murder Hobo Inc. <laughs> yeah. so, he only uh, has experience with us, but really not all players are, so... Yeah, that's right. I 32 years, I've only dealt with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what we're going to do, folks. We're going to go ahead and talk about the friendly villain, a.k.a. an alternate villain. Uh, not everybody has to be an evil asshole. That's just my favorite kind of play. Uh, so what we'd <laughs> like to do is what we think a, a friendly villain or a, a positive-based villain uh, would be and just discuss it because uh, surprisingly uh, there are a lot of different options and being an old school kind of guy I'll tell you this the complete book of villains was a blue cover item put out by second edition oh, God. Uh, you can get it on drive through RPG for a very reasonable price if you want to hone the skills of your villain I highly Highly I need to pick it up, Frank. <laughs> it, it, it is actually anything on the blue covers and uh, TV <laughs> was fantastic. Uh, I, I they sit next to my bed. Uh, if you have to take a long crap, man, they're right there. They're, they're right there, uh, man. Yeah, right there. You know, read a chapter. Oh, uh, you know, you're bored at work. You know, whatever. Uh, so we'll go around the horn. We'll go ahead and give out some options. Uh, again, this is more for you rather than us. We're just going to go ahead and brainstorm and spitball. So do we go? Let me or... let me ask a question here first. Are we sure. talking about a villain, or are we talking? Are we splitting the difference between villain and antagonist? And you can do for... either if you prefer. Okay, because normally I would say the antagonist is a good guy who at the very beginning seems like he has evil intentions is always always against the party but at the end it's just like no he's for the side of right and good all throughout and just because he's not a good person doesn't mean that he doesn't or he doesn't he's not nice to you doesn't mean he's not a good person meanwhile your villain is someone who has intentions that are morally opposed to the party and so i just wanted to clarify that before we got too far along down the road that that being said because you're going to be first uh, i always am is the antagonist a flunky of the bad guy absolutely not uh, he could be used <laughs> could be no could be used. maybe Wait. yes <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, uh, like Frank said earlier, when we're talking about uh, uh, villains um, and how they act, the first thing uh, and what I've done for every NPC for the cred campaign so far is that I roll a D6. Uh, and that tells me whether, okay, we are entirely against the party down to my very being or, hey, the, these guys are a bunch of schmucks and I'm going to be nice to them and they seem like nice people mm -hmm. and so every NPC I roll uh, from every villain to every uh, um, every blacksmith every priest is just a quick roll of the d6 and that's just my way of making sure it's like I don't necessarily follow a trope of 
oh, the good, the bad guy is just a, a little old man, and he just needs you to fetch some apples from the magic tree over there and bring them forth so he can unleash the hordes of hell. You've done that, Kyle. <laughs> Have I done that? Not yes, yet. You. Close. Partially. Partially. Carol, what about you, Carol? Um, you know, it's funny. I was I keep thinking about the Craig campaign because Kyle was very, very clever on his because I am quite sure that some of the villager towns folks that we have been dealing with, some of them are definitely villains. I do couldn't you I could not tell you which ones. I mean well, Miss Andre Jaeger, why would you say that? Yeager, why, no. would I, why would I say that? <laughs> well, first there was a bartender. Who knew who I was before I said who I was? That is not sketch. You know that is definitely sketchy as fuck. I I do have my suspicions now. That would be actually He's a sweet bartender. That is a it. very so, sweet bartender. So, I like him. So you can so, seem like he's spinning a web around you people. He may even name a drink after you. You know, call it something like the Jaeger bomb or the, something. The, no, the post. So uh, I'll, t- I'll tell you one thing that, um, I mean, he was one, the magistrate, uh, you know, I, I, mean, I don't necessarily think the magistrate's a bad guy. I think the magistrate just has to stick up his ass, but he could be a bad guy. I think, I think that's the, I think as Frank said, you don't want to make every bad guy like a, you know, somebody who is likable and and appears to work with the party and such you don't want to make every single one because you're right eventually we'll just get suspicious of every single person there you want to make sure you have you you have you have a balance or even have just one villain with a bunch of good guys i don't think that's the case in this town i think there's multiple baddies and i think i think the cult i think the cult is in this town and i suspect it could be that bartender uh but that's, I mean, that is such a good example, if it is true. Now, I think it's, I think it's better I talk about it because I don't know. Because Kyle talks about it, then, you know, he, we don't want to giving it any, I don't want to giving out any spoilers. What? Don't worry about it, guys. I, I love the fun. I tell love, me everything you think. <laughs> um, I said it was funny. I, I sort of draw a string right from Anja's home to the bartender. And that string goes from the guy who sent her here all the way through the um, the blacksmith's wife. Although she's a blacksmith too, I guess, right? And then right to the bartender. So who knows? It's Maybe starting right. to be Charlie Day from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> I know, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put on And my... that's how you know you're running a Cthulhu <laughs> campaign right. And, 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 and you really are. And uh, Kyle's got to make a magic item, the tinfoil hat. You know? <laughs> oh, you totally should. And by the way, the pro- my problem is I've been playing this game for 30 years and I've seen so much shit that I tend to. I, I, part of it, too, is that actually I like intrigue. I like it when when bad guys, you know, when there's when bad guys are there's a lot of them and. And they're all out to get you. I actually really like that and trying to suss out who really is a bad guy. I love coming up with conspiracy theories in, in games. I was doing it during uh, campaign one, too. I would sit there and, and was trying to... Of course, Frank kept changing things. So, you know, I may have had things guessed there. And then he changed them all. <laughs> the, uh, Multiple. The antagonist. <laughs> Multiple. I think he was. Yeah, he was an antagonist. He's not the bad guy. So David, what do you think? I'm going to do one better. There is a whole class, subclass of antagonists. It is the warlock. And mm. they're, the, the villains are the patrons. And guess who ends up being their patsy? <laughs> so, you know, so, but yeah, I mean, the, the patrons, I mean, there's so many, <laughs> you know, technically evil patrons, you know, you've got the pack. You, you know the fiend you've got the noble genie a gin isn't necessarily your friend no uh now you got the vamp uh the vampire uh yeah it's just that uh, the, there's a whole rogues gallery within that cl- within that specific class and uh it 
it lends well if you're that type of player too, where you know you see yourself becoming the antagonist. And you know, and it, that's great. I love the warlock, it is a great class for that, and you can get great stories from it. You know, there's so many possibilities. Like, for example, with the Craig campaign, Bran answers to the Raven Queen. Raven Queen is always benevolent. So. But he's but he's not a warlock either. No, so he's, uh, no, he's a muck. That's not what I, I'm saying. I'm saying the Raven Queen herself is not benevolent. So, you know. She's neither. Right, exactly. She just, death, death, death kind of tests remain neutral. Right. So well, it, she's, 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 no, it is in the truest sense, death is, is actually a neutral entity. Let me tell you this way in a campaign so, that I was in, I was a warlock. I had the Raven queen as a patron. Uh, yeah. I decided to switch classes and become something else. And yeah, she, she hit me with, uh, with some insanity for a while. So as, as payback. But anyway, my, my point being is that, yeah, I mean, the, the, that whole class itself is, you know, fodder for something like that. So Good, good call. It's true. Okay, so uh, all of us here are DMs, so this one will be kind of a personal opinion on this. Uh, in, I'm not going to say researching this because all I did was think about it. I don't need to research <laughs> that bullshit. Uh, the library have, is up here in my he mind. He is the Encyclopedia <laughs> Britannica. <laughs> well, I, I was trying to come up with the perfect friendly villain. Uh, and oddly enough, uh, I went to Star Wars because Emperor Palpatine <laughs> was just Mr. Fucking Helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, for those of you uh, that understand or enjoy that particular genre, uh, let's let's also factor in Count Dooku mm -hmm. because was he bad because he knew that this was going on and sought help? Uh, so as a DM, would you prefer to run your campaign just from the get-go, Emperor Palpatine, you know, you know he's going to fuck over the party, or would you use, uh, as Kyle put it, an antagonist such as Count Dooku, who, Jesus, uh, this is a problem, nobody wants to help me, yeah, I work for this guy. Uh, so what kind of an angle as a DM would you prefer to use? We'll start with Kyle, because we're just... I mean, the antagonist is generally going to be a good red herring for your actual uh, friendly villain. Uh, and so, I mean, that's um, where we discuss campaign and we have certain arcs within the campaign over the overall arc. That antagonist character shows up for one or two arcs there. And then at the end of his arc, necessarily, you find out that, no, he's not the villain, and he has good intentions, and whether your party lets him survive long enough to actually find that out, or if they read his secret diary where he says, Emperor Palpatine is the real villain. And at that point, it should already be too late for uh, uh, your party to stop whatever the evil emperor has in mind. So, yeah, no, an antagonist is a great stepping stone to figuring out who your actual villain is. Um, trying to do, you, do you elevate Dooku to villain and then put Palpatine on the same level as different big bad villains? Uh, I mean, I'm doing a little bit of a dive into Star Wars lore as I learn more about all this stuff, and it's just like... At that point, that's factions. Both of them are villains. Um, I mean, the road to hell is paved in good intentions, and Count Dooku is essentially just trying to set up these good intentions. Now, I'm just trying to stop the Empire. I work for him sometimes, but I'm going to just use that to kind of 
start a new order that is better and you know uh um and that's how i'm going to stop Emperor palpatine whereas palpatine himself has i want power at the end of it uh and these are the stepping stones the stepping blocks and so um I guess, what was it, Carol? Uh, one is a villain with pathos. Pathos. Uh, pathos, uh, which is your... Uh, oh my goodness, I keep forgetting his name, and I've been trying to remember his name. Dooku, thank you. Is he... Count Dooku <laughs> is he the have... villain with pathos. I guess he does, yeah. He does, because he was... Uh, uh, he and Qui-Gon Jinn, I think, were contemporaries. They were. Yes, uh, and then trade under Yoda. So it's not like. But what makes him sympathetic? That Pathos is a character that had, that you are sympathetic to. Because he wanted help to defeat. Okay, I was to trying defeat. to remember. It's been a while. I don't think he fully knew that uh, Palpatine was a Sith. He knew there was a Sith running around, and he knew he needed help. He just did. He like everybody else ignored the obvious and kept looking for it. So in that way, I thought that would be his pathos as, hey, there's a bad guy here. I'm totally oblivious that it's the guy I'm working for. We need to find this guy. Uh, fuck you. I know you're working for the bad guy, and I'm going to chop your arms off. Uh, yeah. But he himself was like a Sith, so I'm not really yeah, sure. He was aware he was a Sith. He was a Sith. Sorry, spoilers. Uh, for the I've never seen this. However old movie. I <laughs> Sorry, I do. I do with spoilers. You know, within a month or two of the flipping movie. If you haven't watched it after twenty years or ten years, whatever. That's look. If a guy not my problem. Saruman shows up and he's friendly, kill him because he's the villain. Yeah. <laughs> so Carol, what's your answer? Well, what the fuck was the question again? Because that was like... Would you rather have Palpatine the whole time and that that's your goal? Or do you want to spice it up with Dooku uh, as an antagonist slash bad guy slash good guy? Hmm. Because realistically, I... once you kill Dooku, you could consider that campaign done if that's what you were doing. Now, it doesn't end the big picture, but it does give you a focus it's just like when you kill the bbg at fourth level hey i'm fourth level now i'm hot shit well yeah but now you got a whole bunch more of bigger truckloads of shit to deal with so do you want to go palpatine or do you want to go dooku i think i like palpatine because he was he was such an um, he was pulling all the strings but he was a very unobvious he was the unobvious BBEG that didn't get revealed until, you know, he basically took over. I, 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 I like intrigue. I really like intrigue. And to me, that's the sort of intrigue I like. So uh, Dooku was more obvious the uh, antagonist or, or the bad guy. Mm -hmm. But Palpatine, he, he definitely was not. And I also affect he's he has charisma and he could win people over. And he did a lot of things via diplomacy and such. I, th I think I like that, too, is the fact that it wasn't just, you know, he didn't go on just murder everybody. And I was, no, he made friends everybody and got them to make him murder the emperor. Mm -hmm. And I, hey. I like that. I, I like that very much. Well, David? and to be fair, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, you're no, that, because I'm, now I'm, I'm thinking about this a little bit longer. And your friendly villain can't really be your overall villain in any any sort of arc whatsoever correct you exactly. have to have you're, some you're ahead of the curve principle. now <laughs> yeah although, i get in there although well, i mean to a lot of people particularly palpatine was a friendly villain as i said he did a lot of the string pulling via diplomacy absolutely and, but and in the first friendly. movie we had darth maul in the second movie we had count dooku right third movie the emperor palpatine reveals that he has been friendly this entire time but that he is the villain um and he sets you so far down the road so he's not been you can't have a a huge villain arc where he's obviously the villain the entire time 
at least give me a few moments more to think about this. David will answer it because my idea for a villain for a whole arc, and when we talked about this previously, I gave the example of Borderlands 2, a video game, uh, where the uh, main villain was um, Handsome Jack. And mm-hmm. he talked to you from the beginning to the moment you shot him in the head and killed him at the end. And he was a dick the entire time. And you <laughs> enjoyed that last bullet. Uh, nice. uh, where a friendly villain, I don't see that as quite a possibility without having your red herring or another faction villain coming in. Um, that being said, back to David, while I think and ponder on this a little bit more, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to throw another genre at you. Okay, end game. Lord of the Rings. End game. Thanos. Endgame. Thanos. Thanos. Thanos wasn't necessarily evil. I mean, he wasn't. And yeah, when he comes out of the gate, he's doing evil things and well, what could be considered evil, but to him, it wasn't, you know? So, I mean, he definitely believed he was saving the universe. Uh, also, uh, and the reason the catalyst was for that is because his, he saw his home world fall apart from, you know, war, endless war and resources running out. And he knew that this is happening throughout the universe. And, you know, the universe only has, you know, finite number of resources to support you know so yeah so hence his crusade which what it was was and to, so to we as the audience knew from the very beginning i don't know how many of the actual heroes knew about thanos from the very beginning right uh, yeah. guardians of the galaxy really but even then yeah not from the beginning and yeah. so when we start that arc of the end game <clears throat> of collecting the stones Mm -hmm. We had that mixture of antagonists working for the villain lieutenants. Right. And I don't know whether you could say any of them were antagonistic in the sense of you're a good guy, but you're just doing all the bad things um, like Count Dooku. But then you also had other factions come in. Mm -hmm. So with um, Doctor Strange, you had uh, Mikhail Echo... Eccleston, I can't mm. remember his name. He was a completely different faction going after the Time Stone. Yeah. Uh, whereas you have Ronan the... Uh, uh, yeah, Ronan. I mean, you know... Was a I mean, yeah. So, uh, you know, and I mean, the whole Marvel Universe is full of it like that because, I mean, they have great examples of, you know... Uh, you know, villains with different arcs and how they came to be and stuff like that. I mean, it's it's a great genre because, I mean, there's thousands of people that are working, you know, on this lore. Um, so, so yeah, so you can kind of see that track with some of the examples that we threw, threw out there. Uh, I'm going to throw one last one at you, and he's become a hero. Loki. So, you know... Mm, anti-hero mm, kind of yeah, yeah i think i don't think he's a hero hero although i mean i like the guy i, I love mm-hmm. loki but i think he's more of an anti-hero he's still kind of a dick and kind of a he'll still yeah. he's still very um he's so you haven't watched loki yet. i did i did watch loki. He's <laughs> still... he had a choice at the end and uh, yeah he's gonna do i mean he ultimately will do the right thing, but there's still a bit of self. He's still yeah. rather self-serving. Oh yeah. So he's. Then, I'm not willing to say he's the good guy yet. No. That no. may come. That may come. But and, well, now he's still an anti-hero. One thing though is, uh, and being a huge history buff and a history minor and all that happy shit is. Mm-hmm. You have to understand that the losing side rarely thinks they were wrong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you don't yes. go in, you know what? I know I'm wrong. I'm going to do this anyway. Fuck this, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the, the losing side always, you know, I, a, and a good example, the United States Cavalry. We're mm-hmm. the heroes. We're going to massacre Indians. Right. Yeah. We're History's wrong. written by the winners. That's why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it so, is. yeah. Now, a lot of good examples there. I would also throw in Saruman mm-hmm. uh, because, you know, 
So it, you're going to go ahead and create a campaign. Do you wait until the last possible scenario, you know, the, the pinnacle of your campaign to say, oh, hey, I'm Palpatine, I'm the bad guy, sorry I've been fucking you over, or do you start to let the party build evidence to think, uh, why is the guy that keeps paying me asking me to do the weird shit? Uh, I so, like the building. <laughs> yeah, so I like the build up. Well, we'll go in reverse order. Go ahead. Why do you like the build up? I I do. I like the build up because I I I like the clues. Uh, you know, narratively, you can always have an aside. You know, uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I I like the build up. You know, uh, to the discovery. Yeah, so. Carol. Yeah, I I do too. Um, I guess sort of a combo of the two. I like a build up to keep those clues very cryptic and and keep the PCs guessing. And then right at the end, you know, if they haven't guessed, then you just have the big reveal. But I but I still, you know, I'll still don't mind throwing clues out there and building it up over time. And and if they figure it out, great. If they don't, then I have the big reveal. Kyle? I think I should not have been on the show because a lot of my villains are currently in my campaign. Well, don't, don't, yeah, just don't, don't talk no, about no, 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 that. No, no, so no, so let's, let's talk. I'm going to turn this just a hair bit. And I'm going to talk about as a DM running your friendly villains for just a second. Um, and that is because um, absolutely, uh, I like the villain at the very end. The party has been slowly uh, building up to him, but I don't necessarily want him to be a central figure that the party is always working for. I'd rather them be like, oh, yeah. And then on occasion, can you go get me the sword of uh, uh, Vecna? Um, and, uh, what? Huh? <laughs> Vecna's, Vecna? Vecna's the sword of Koss, Vecna's right hand man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sword of Koss, thank you very much. Much. Yeah. Um, but um, as far as running that friendly villain, um, so yeah, I like build up players finding out hints, but the hint doesn't necessarily always point you to the villain. Every clue you find doesn't point you in the right direction. A clue as a DM for when you're running a friendly villain should point you or at least tell you that you're going the wrong doesn't tell you which way is the right direction it tells you that this is the wrong direction and you need to try somewhere else uh and that's the other thing is i find that dms um will answer questions yes or no and i think that's the wrong way to go about them for example with certain skills such as insight um never answer yes or no to a place hey can i trust this guy yes no it should always be an explanation that allows a player to make a more informed decision but not necessarily the right or wrong decision one of those just more information feelings, thoughts, you can point them in a certain direction, um, but never push them in a direction. Uh, and so, I mean, that's one of the issues we're going to have with friendly friendly villains, and any DM is going to have with a friendly villain, is if all your clues point to him, um, or you, one player decides to pick the observant feet and have a passive inside of 22 and say do i trust this guy <laughs> no he's absolutely the evil guy and you should kill him right now before he finds the sword of kaz to kill you all with uh now again you you kind of leapfrog me on this one because the last I? yes the <laughs> last question is some players are stupid and some dms don't present a situation very well 
Now, considering we're all just top shelf fucking DMs and we get a party who can't solve the kids menu from Burger King, <laughs> do you spell it out uh, and, you know, kind of spoon feed it? Or do you just turn it into oh, bad guy? You guys fucked up. And now he's got initiative on him. Second option. Second I option. I mean, don't start yeah, with the initiative. Dumb, second. Uh, he should come in riding the red dragon with the sword of cause in his hand. <laughs> or he just says, oh, thank you so much. Throwing the head of the your fa- family members down. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> your mom says hi. Hi, son, I'm proud of you. <laughs> with oh, a blood man. flying off the head. <laughs> it's a down. spray. And the natural 20-year-old from the DM conks you in the face. Uh, Carol, what do you think? One or two? It depends. I, I mean, it depends on a lot of things. Like, you know, um, first of all, is your game being stalled by them trying to figure this out and they need to have the answer dropped in their lap and people are getting frustrated and not having fun, then, yeah, drop the answer. Of course, the dropping the answer in the lap could be Sending him in our red dragon with the sword and roll initiative. I mean, that that to me still is dropping the answer in their lap. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I if I have a choice, yeah, option two. I mean, make it fit the story and the narrative. Don't just you know, don't just come right out and say, oh yeah, this is this is the bad guy. That'd be boring. Make it fit your narrative. Storytelling is a part of it. In spite of what Frank may think, storytelling and role play is a part of this game. So. Kind of digging the spinning head. <laughs> just That's kind of cool. And just... <laughs> David, last that one. It's going to end up in a shell. I know it. Uh, <laughs> uh, since I do I hope for, it is. for kids, hey, hey. kids uh, think everything's the bad guy. Everything. Every single freaking thing. So sometimes you have to spoon feed it or just have it yeah. like Ta-da! <laughs> Guess is, what, guys? That is so, that is really fair. Yeah. That's yeah. very fair. So would you say somebody who snaps a puppy's neck would be considered the bad guy? Someone who punts a child when they think it's a puppy. <laughs> yes! <laughs> you had the puppy in your hand. I thought it was a halfling. <laughs> Wait, was that, that was in Cacophony, right? Cacophony oh, was... was Sadelfany was uh Did they yeah, have Billy. the puppy in half? Oh wait, yeah, no, yeah, that's right. Raged. You ripped you ripped the freaking puppy in half or I don't remember why you ripped a puppy in half. He was and right then you got mad. I, I thought uh 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 Chris Maniz would bring the puppy back to life because I'm intelligent. But why did I'm you rip wise. it in half? Why did you rip it in half in the first place though? Because you can bring it act things back, yeah. yeah that's still a terrible. Oh, that's wait. Oh no, that wasn't the no. That was the smart. Before. That was the wise, week before that. Not charismatic. <laughs> okay, just smart. What, what? One last question. Uh, last. Because I just thought it. Uh, <gasps> yay or nay? Yay or nay? Because we're short on time. I was uh, disagree with we'll, Frank. We'll start with Carol, then go to Kyle, then oh. go to David. Here it comes. The question is, if you are in a campaign, do you make one of the PCs the bad guy? If I'm running a campaign. Yay or nay? Uh, It doesn't have to be from the get-go, but at some point in time... Once again, it depends on the players. I mean, you cannot do that with every group. But with the right group of play, peer players and somebody who, who would relish that role, absolutely. If that's what they want, yeah. Uh, that is dependent upon the player's actions. As you said earlier, uh, history goes to the victors, not necessarily the losers. The PCs are probably going to be the victors the entire time. Until the end. Until the <laughs> end. <laughs> It's cool. I got this sword of Kaz and I have this mount that's a red dragon. I have a letter what from do your I do sister. Now? It's written on her tongue. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's at that point he throws the head up. What? I'm 
the villain. Hey! hey. Surprise! <laughs> hey. Dave, what do you think, especially oh, with gosh. kids? I say yes. Bad choices have consequences. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> hey, 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 Frank, and I mentioned this in an email today, uh, that email today to explain pathos. You know, you, you, you ever run campaign one characters again, you, you have that opportunity, so... I have that opportunity right now, Robert of Zeppelin, if you're watching. <laughs> you're ready, Frank. Maybe, ready. maybe Nick is uh, the bad guy. Folks, this has been Nick uh, is. Murder. <laughs> yeah, this has been Murder Elbow Link Between the Rolls. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about DD, join our Discord. If you want to buy our cool crap, check out the link. Uh, most importantly, if you want to be in the one shot this Saturday or on next Tuesday's uh, Between the Rolls, M Hobo Inc., Twitter or Gmail, hit us up. We will get you on there. Thank you, Pirate Dog Dice, for really fucking with the Margu guys uh, last week. Mm -hmm. And uh, Adventure Sense uh, to help those who have stinky games, unlike ours. Hey, ours is success. hey Frank. Yeah. Also, I believe there's going to be a one shot a week from this Thursday, correct? We do not know for sure. We don't know. Oh, man. Yeah. I know he's say. ready to run, so I'm pretty sure it's going to be a one-shot, unless unless Kyle decides to run the campaign without me, which that's fair. Could happen. Folks, for all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc., thanks for joining us. Uh, we will see you on Thursday for Cacophony, one of the last episodes of Cacophony. Uh, kiss and wave. Uh, bye, everybody. Bye. Muted. Oh, nice, Kyle. We got rid of that toot sweet.